I said that we need to explain what happened. How did we get started when the, we were in the crib and we saw TVs, uh, ETs? But uh, what I really want to focus on, because this is what's hot in the news right now, this is June 5th of 2020, and right now, you know, the conversation is about racism and what it doesn't mean to be racist. And people are saying, well, we're all racist in some way. And how can you tell if you're racist? And what's the difference between racism and tribalism? And how can we stop radical violence in America? And, like, how many Americans are killed by cops every year? And um, and how many that are killed are people of color? And how many women and mentally ill and homeless and poor? And then there's a comparison between the 68 protests following the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King with the protests of today. And I don't know, we've got 33 topics on AquariumRadio.com on this. But what happened, I'll start, and I'll, I'll put my timer on, you know, five minutes. Let me put my timer on one second. Ah. All right, I'm on mute. Now we're going to get serious. I'm on mute. Okay. Just tell me now when i got to come get on. Here, so I'm going to go five minutes. I will. Okay, here we go. Five minutes. Uh, oh, come on. I've got to get this set up. Oh, hold one second. Here we go. Five minutes. Start. Okay, so yesterday I was watching Don Lemon and uh, which one was it? One of the talk show hosts. I can see his picture in my mind, but I get confused on which one it was. And they were talking about systemic racism. And they were talking about the violence. And of course, we had uh, George Floyd killed and yesterday was his funeral we've had a week of racism and the, the world has been on fire but I, I started it, and this was very uh, a nasty thing right before to do right before I went to bed but I was so curious after watching this commentary with the two of them and I started to google uh, police violence and I, I was actually very shocked and I only made it through about five or six videos where um, they they seem to, it, it just goes across the board, actually. I mean, they're doing a lot of uh, people of color, but the violence is just extreme. So I saw one video where there was a poor man, and, I, you know, it doesn't really matter his color, but he, he happened to be white, and I, I didn't pay attention to the color of the cops. Everybody's kind of mixed right now, but there were some cops, and they cornered this poor man who was obviously mentally um Slow, very slow mentally. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to use a politically inappropriate term, but he was slow. Um, and they basically ripped him out of his car, threw him on the ground, and they kept tasering him until he was just bleeding. And then, and then there was another woman that was obviously um, mentally incapacitated. She was somehow in a in a motel, was one year days in or something, and um, she was running around with scissors, and the cop wanted her to stop holding these scissors. And she was on the phone, panic, panic talking to, to a friend or something, and, and she wasn't going to set those down. And, and, and then she, she got shot, and he killed her. And then there was another one where these people were um, having a domestic fight, husband and wife, and there's three kids, and they were outside, and I guess the neighbors called the cops, and they came up to the woman, and they the dog, which was their family dog, uh, started to defend you know, its family. And so the cop said, lady, uh, control your dog. And she was obeying the cop, and he, uh, he went to shoot her, or I guess. So the story was. And he sh- I mean, she shit the dog, and he shot her, and that, leaving this, oh. um, these children uh, with no um, mother. And it went on and on and on and on and on. And I oh. think, and I'll put this up, I'll pass the talking stick. I think the problem is the training of the cops because I've seen, you know, many episodes in my life. I came from a relatively poor neighborhood, and, and the cops would talk down. In my neighborhood where I grew up, uh, there was a, um, a husband and wife. They had one son, and, and they, would take, they would take turns. They would take the mother away one time and put her in a you know, cool down overnight, and then it was kind of like, uh, you know, Mayberry, right? You know, here's the cell, go cool down. And so it seemed like the cops in the in my childhood, which is in the 50s and 60s, had some training in how to talk people down. 
But now with the tasers, and, and my husband came home one day from Borders. He said, there was some poor guy coming out of Borders, and he said, I came up, and they were just tasering him over and over and over, and that stone to get people heart attacks. And, and then Sash said something else, stop hurting that man. And, and then the cops started coming after him, and then the cop said, oh, I'm going to remember you. Um, and I, I went, what the hell's going on here? And then another time, um, my I had a store in town, and and the the, the person was that was managing my store uh, wouldn't let my other coworker in, so she called to she won't let me in to come to work. So I went down there, and and I came over and I was talking to the cop, and next thing I know, he said, "Lady, to me, lady, if you don't stop talking right now, I'm gonna arrest you." And I went, "Whoa!" And I'm thinking, "What did I say?" Uh, I don't want to get arrested. I don't want to get tasered. So I just, I walked away. Because <laughs> it was like all I could do because I didn't want to say one more word. So anyway, there, I think the problem is the cops and their training. So I'm going to I'm gonna stop and pass the stick. Karen, would you like to take the stick? And, you can either respond to that or pick another subject. Okay. I'm going to stop that. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. You no, know, I'm I'm going to respond to it because I think uh, I think it's terrible about the racism, and I think that uh, you know my 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 Robert, my galactic forever partner, he would always say, you know that there are parts of the South that never recovered from the Civil War. I'm sorry, you know mm-hmm. Texas kind of borderlines on the South and the Southwest, but uh, in and it's not any certain part of the United States. So I'm not talking about that because I'm not prejudiced with any part of the United States. But I do think it's terrible. And uh, But there's another thing. What are they going to do when the blue people come in and some of, the, some of our friends that are different colors? You know, there's not only brown, black, or white. There are other colors. And if we can't deal with these, it really shows how far behind we are and so I'm it's my belief that if we awaken and let those energies and frequencies elevate through the higher consciousness through meditation and I'm going to talk later about what higher consciousness is or maybe I should do it now but the word consciousness means you're conscious about what you see that's around you and where you are that's your conscious, like you're looking wherever you are inside on the earth plane, the television, the lights, the outside. That's the 3D conscious. And the systems aren't working here. It's not going to happen here. What, what the person wants to obtain in the elevation of higher consciousness and understanding through those magical doors are not going to take place on the earth plane. This is where we've come in to do our lessons that we picked before we ever came into a human form. And by people desiring to seek and asking questions, okay, what happens after this? Where do we go? What do we do? Well, they say heaven. Well, what is heaven? What does this mean? But nobody of the masses really want to seek and ask questions uh, about this. We're still in my in a minority, all of us who are in this field and the cosmic consciousness field. And we've come here to now's the time. Now's really the thick of it to help people understand what consciousness is and how they can learn to get there because everybody can do it. I mean, you know, that's what Jesus said when he came in here is that he could do it and others could do it better. I mean, nobody's any better than anybody else. It's just we all have to get to a place where we realize that the 3D is not going to be what makes it happen. It's important. We love it. We have a lot of good things to obtain and to give on this level of consciousness, but it's not going to happen here. And that's why I think a lot of these issues are happening and it's going to get stronger unless we can go in and lift and awaken and help the people who really don't understand what a lot of this means. So that's my talk on it. And I totally agree with you. I think uh, a lot of the police officers, I think they're great. 
but I also think they have a lot of anger and whatever they didn't work out in their lessons or their origin or whatever before they came into this plane, they're it's triggering something in them, and they're trans, they're transitioning or they're projecting on the victim. So that's my belief, Janet. You know, I can say more. Oh, okay. But. So are you are you yielding the rest of your time, or are you uh, do you want, you have another minute? Do you want to complete, or do you no, want to yield I have your time? To say that I think that people like you and TJ, me, and many others, many others, we're, there's still a lot of us. Uh, are here to teach people who are interested in how to wake that part up inside them about the questions from the invisible world. Let's call it the invisible places, places we can't see. And that's I'm really on fire with that today. So uh, I think that we can stop this. I don't think that it has to be this way. We don't have to let this racism, this cruelty, this criminalism, this uh, abuse. It's a, it's the ultimate of bullying, whether it's individualized or group or whatever. We are in a bullied society, and it's got to stop. That's all I have to say, okay. Jane. Well, thank you. That was perfect. You're out of I'll time. I'll get off my show. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to pass it to... TJ, the talking stick. So, TJ, it's your turn for the next five minutes. If you're uh, complete at any point, you can say, I yield the rest of my time, but go ahead and start right now. You can, well, you, you can finish this topic or use this one. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This is Teresa J. Morris, and I'm running for con- – no, oh, that's not it. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Regarding, uh, this is Janet Carolesson of Hawaii that you just heard speaking, folks, on my channel. And we've invited Karen Gresham Nickel, and I did not do a proper uh, beginning on my show. So I want to apologize for the last few minutes, uh, not for Janet or Karen, or uh, the five minutes that oh, I've been given. But uh, just so I, I no had my, yeah, I, I apologize to my ladies. And uh, we are trying to do a something wonderful here and right now janet is going to do her best to get us organized because that's what she is she's my aco event manager in my mind and she does a really good job of it especially with eight years of putting up with me but <clears throat> i'd like to talk about our human security because i have worn a uniform i've been law enforcement criminal justice i've been trained in arson fraud subrogation and i have been trained by the united states of america and I was fortunate enough to wear Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines, <clears throat> and a few black ops, and uh, as a, even a civilian in GS status. So I understand the significance of having uh, definitions of international security and human security. And it's very much uh, a way of life for me because I believe in what America stands for. I grew up saying I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty to justice and justice for all. Now, I only made one mistake, and justice for all, because I don't say anymore. But I used to say that every day when I went to school. And I wish we had that back in America, a uh, pledge to the flag, because so many people don't understand the colors and what it means or why we are loyal to a country or what it means to be American, or to have pride in our government, in our United States of America, and to our history. But human security is an emerging paradigm for understanding global vulnerabilities, because we have grown into a a country that is part of a global existence. So human security, human sovereignty, human freedom. uh, Janet, I don't know if... It's me or you, but I don't know. I just think we're all working together, and Karen, too. And I may not say it as eloquently as these ladies, but I've always had the – I'm the oldest of seven kids born in Monroe, Louisiana, raised in Houston, Texas. And uh, after uh, I spent about 20 years being married and having kids, I went uh, back into the government and – got to travel the world, and I went to Portugal and Spain. I didn't get to go to Brazil, but I went to uh, Japan and uh, UK. I've been all over the world, and I enjoyed doing what I did. But regarding humans humans and humanity and dignity, I was treated very well in all countries, especially in Japan. 
But, you know, the way that we conduct ourselves has a lot to do with it. And I was listening to the uh, George Floyd uh, funeral on TV on CNN, 